Francis expressed his love of all creation with words of kinship. We have already seen how he named a wolf terrorizing the town of Gubbio as Friar Wolf. In his beautiful canticle to Brother Sun and Sister Moon, a hymn of praise well attested to be authored by Francis gives thanks for all God's creatures, especially Sir Brother Sun, who is the day through whom you give us light. He added, praise be you, my Lord, to Sister Moon and all the stars. In the heavens you have made them bright, precious, and fair. And continue with praise for the Lord who made Brother Wind and Air, Sister Water, Brother Fire, our Sister Mother Earth, and finally he praises Sister Death, from whom no one living can escape. Blessed are they she finds doing your will, as no second death can harm them. Francis' friends, Bonaventure and Thomas of Solano, wrote early biographies, and they both told of his preaching to birds. Thomas writes of Francis seeing a very great number of a variety of birds gathered together. Francis ran eagerly toward the birds and was not a little surprised that the birds did not fly away. With joy, he begged them to hear the word of God. And, after preaching many things to them, he added, My brother birds, much ought you to praise your Creator, and ever to love him who has given you feathers for clothing, wings for flight, and all that you had need of. God has made you noble among his creatures, for he has given you a habitation in the purity of the air. And, whereas you neither sow nor reap, he himself does still protect and govern you without any care of your own. At length he blessed them, and having made the sign of the cross, gave them leave to fly away to another place. Thomas adds, And so it came to pass that from that day he diligently exhorted all winged creatures, all beasts, all reptiles, and even creatures insensible, to praise and love the Creator, since daily, on his calling on the Savior's name, he had knowledge of their obedience by his own experience. The founding of the Third Order by St. Francis is said to have been done for the benefit of Lucezio and Juanadana, an Italian couple who wanted to live a Franciscan lifestyle outside of a monastery or convent. Lucezio became involved in politics and was a leader of one of the political parties in Tuscany, but the political environment was very troubling, and the couple felt they and their children were threatened. They decided to move to Poggibonsi, where Lucezio discovered he had a knack for business. Soon his growing wealth made him, well, greedy. It wasn't long before the couple was struck by tragedy, losing all of their children. This precipitated a dramatic change in Lucezio's life, and he set his heart and mind on seeking the treasure of God's kingdom. Fascinated by the well-known example and the gospel values of St. Francis of Assisi, whom he met probably in 1221, he embraced a penitential way of being and devoted himself to prayer fasting, and sharing his possessions with the poor. According to tradition, Bonadonna did not at first accept her husband's new lifestyle, but she experienced some signs of God's providence, which convinced her to join him wholeheartedly on this new path. As they grew closer and closer to God, they gave away all their possessions except a small portion of land. This is when their kinship with creation became more important to the couple. They nurtured their small plot to maximize its fruitfulness, and they tended the plot not for their own sustenance alone, but out of a desire to give any surplus to assist the poor. The two experienced God's providence in that no matter how many people in need came their way, the carefully tended patch of soil produced food enough to care for all. Lucasio also helped care for the sick at the hospital in Pogabonsi. After leading a penitential life for many years, both spouses became ill and died within a few hours of each other and were buried in the chapel of the Friars Minor in Pogabonsi. Not long after their deaths, they were venerated locally. Their testimony helps us remember that the Franciscan way of life begins with a sincere conversion to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then our ongoing conversion allows us to serve our brothers and sisters, especially the poor and the suffering, by sharing our gifts, talents, and time. Their kinship with creation permitted them to feed increasing numbers of those who otherwise would have gone hungry. Like Lucesio and Bonadonna, Many Christians today tend gardens whose food will supply those in need. Communities plant gardens of all sizes and kinds together. From small pots of herbs to hundreds of acres of vegetables, 
in order to share the love of Christ through word and action, food and labor. This life-giving care is part of the Episcopal Church's Good News Garden Initiative, a church-wide movement of individuals, congregations, schools, colleges, seminaries, monasteries, camps, and conference centers involved in a variety of food and creation care ministries. Gardening, farming, beekeeping, composting, gleaning, feeding, food justice advocacy. Just one example among many in our Diocese of Georgia is the garden at St. Mark's in Brunswick, where attending a garden connects deeply with concern for fellow humans. Frank and I have trouble living into this with our travel schedule. Instead, we subscribe to our local farm bag, getting fresh local produce as we support our neighbors who do farm. We are also diligent in recycling and compost all we can. Does any of this make a difference in the world? No, but it does keep us mindful of our places in the creation as stewards. Whether expressed as it was by Francis in his kinship with all animals, or by La Cisio and Bonadonna, or those caring for a good news garden, scripture teaches us that God gave us the stewardship of creation. The story goes something like this. In the beginning, God was a gardener. The creator made everything that is from fertile soil and great seas to wildebeest and goldfish. And then the Holy Trinity planted a garden, and Genesis tells us, out of the ground the Lord made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. There in that perfect patch, God placed a man and a woman, both created in God's image, and provided them with everything they needed. Only one thing was forbidden in all creation, and that was to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. As far as we know, Adam and Eve only ate one thing in that garden, forbidden fruit. Such is human nature. Tell me not to do something, and it will create a fairly powerful urge to do whatever is prohibited. Yet, when our disobedience took humanity further from the one who made us and loves us, God did not stand back as judge, but entered into creation to redeem it. And at that moment, we remember this Christmas tide, when the second person of the Holy Trinity was a babe in a manger. All creation was different. Once God was no longer the outside looking in, but within humanity, God sided with us in order to redeem us. Jesus would love us to the end, even when the price of that love was death on a cross. This was revolutionary. The lever that shifted the whole universe as God responded to hate with love and to death with life in the resurrection. When Mary Magdalene sees the resurrected Jesus, she imagines that he is the gardener. How right she was. Jesus was the good gardener who never gave up on creation. God's concern for us and all creation stands in opposition to allowing the separation of sin to remain. Lucizio saw this when his prosperity as a merchant caused him to be greedy for more and more rather than be grateful for all he had. We can crave and hoard rather than giving back in thankfulness. The Catechism teaches that sin is seeking our own will instead of the will of God, thus distorting our relationship with God, with other people, and with all creation. As baptized followers of Jesus, we are committed to resisting evil, seeking God's will, treating all people with dignity, and striving for justice and peace. As God made everything and called it good, loving our neighbor as ourselves, cannot be separated from our care for the world which nourishes us all. Our faith in Jesus is not about us as individuals alone, but is to bring us in love and harmony with God, ourselves, our neighbors, and all creation. For those of us who have come to faith in Emmanuel, the God who is with us, we can discover in caring for creation that we are giving our thanks and praise to the God who providentially gave us the beautiful world around us, and set us in the midst of it. When has coming into contact with God's creation been a holy experience for you? What do you do or have you done that was part of our call to be stewards of creation? <laughs> 